Um, so your book has lots and lots of stuff. It goes into tons and tons of detail. I don't think you need that detail. So there are a couple videos to watch. So make sure you watch those. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about particle physics up here. And then you've got some sheets about particle physics and something called string theory. This is the most advanced physics that's out there. Um, and this is probably the only time you'll see it. Uh, okay, so particle physics. Particle physics is how we build up uh, every particle that exists in the universe. So when you think of what matter is made up of, what do you typically think of as the smallest piece of matter, smallest bit of matter? An atom. Okay. Can you get smaller than an atom? What's smaller than atoms? Yeah, yeah, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Okay. Can you get smaller than a proton or a neutron? Yeah, you can. Protons and neutrons are made up these, of these things called quarks. Electrons, you actually can't get smaller than an electron, we don't think. Okay, so an electron is a fundamental bit of matter. A quark is a fundamental bit of matter. We don't think, or we haven't measured anything smaller than quarks. So quarks are a fundamental piece of matter. Though there are theories that you can get smaller than a quark. In theory, the thing that's smaller than a quark is something called a string. Okay. And that's all theoretical. This is called string theory, also known as M theory. And this is where you get into the really, really weird physics that there might be 11 different dimensions that exist. Okay, so we have uh, these small bits of matter. We're trying to build atoms. Atoms, uh, if you go smaller than an atom, you got protons, neutrons, and electrons. Electrons, fundamental bit of matter, can't get smaller than an electron. And quarks, quarks are the things that make up protons and neutrons. And one of your activities is actually to figure out what quarks go into building a proton or building a neutron. There are little combinations that you can do. So if we're gonna do something called uh, the standard model of physics. This is what particle physics has built, the standard model. The standard model is to physics what the um, periodic table is to chemistry. And in the standard model, uh, there's some things that go into it. There's quarks that go into the standard model. And there's six different quarks. draw a table of quarks. There's an up quark and a down quark. There is a T and a B quark. T stands for top. So what do you think B stands for? Bottom. At one point there were poets and humanities people that were getting involved in particle physics, like the, the hippies over on the other side of campus. They gave these different names. So sometimes you hear these discussed as the truth and beauty quarks. And then there's two other quarks. So for a long time, these were the four quarks that, that we could find. Uh, and then along came these, these two other ones. One they didn't expect to find, but they found. So they called it the strange quark. And then particle physicists think that this is the last one, the C quark. So they've called it the charm quark. It's the charmed one. 
these are six quarks. And every single quark out there also has an antimatter piece called an antiquark. So we got to remember there's an anti up quark, an anti down quark, anti top, anti bottom, anti strange, anti charm. Okay, so we have six quarks. We can write this out, but remember that's actually 12 particles there. Okay. Then we also have another class of particle. In addition to quarks, we have these things called leptons. Let's draw a little chart. Based on this chart, use your critical thinking skills. How many leptons are there? Six. Wrong. Twelve. Twelve. Okay. The leptons. Again, these are smallest bits of matter. So I told you, quarks you can use to build protons and neutrons. How about electrons? Can you get smaller than an electron? No. No. So an electron is a type of lepton. There's also these things called muons and these things called tau particles. The symbol mu and the symbol tau. Okay. So that's three leptons. Uh, you've all heard of electrons. Anybody ever heard of a muon? Or heard that word before? Or a tau? Never heard of these? All right. Your prior education is a failure. Okay. In addition to these three leptons, we have three more. We have something called an electron neutrino, a muon neutrino, and a tau neutrino. And again, all of these have an antiparticle as well. So if I just looked up here and I counted how many particles I've literally written, how many particles have I written in the standard model? How many are up there? 12, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 particles written, but how many particles are there actually? 24, because they all have antiparticles too. And the antiparticles, literally, you, you call the antiparticle of the up particle the anti-up. Not very creative here. So this is almost all of physics. This is almost everything that exists. Now, in addition to this, we need to add on something else. We need to add on how particles interact with each other. These are particles. These are building blocks of atoms. But how those atoms interact... Uh, when we add that on, that completes our model of physics. And there are actually going to be five things that we're going to use for this. We typically lump them up into four boxes and then one other box that's all by itself. And these things, how particles interact with each other, are also known as forces. There's four different forces that exist out there. There's a force called the strong force. The strong force is responsible for atom nuclei being held together. If you think of a nucleus, what's inside of a nucleus? What particles are in a nucleus? You have protons and what else? Neutrons. So what's the charge of the nucleus? Positive. Do positive charges like other positive charges? No, they repel. So why doesn't the nucleus fly apart? It's not the electrons. It's the strong force. The strong force keeps the nucleus glued together. So there's a particle that we use for the strong force. That particle, because we're super, super clever in physics, we call that the gluon. It's the glue that holds the nucleus together, the strong force. Three other forces out there. 
there's light. Light is actually a force. Light. What is light made up of? Waves and particles, and those waves are electromagnetism. So I'm just going to abbreviate EM. Electromagnetism. The electromagnetic force. It's the second force. And what carries light? What's a particle of light called? It's called a photon. Okay, we've got electromagnetic waves, maybe photons. Then we have another force, a force called the weak force. What did we talk about last class? What was the topic? It wasn't quantum physics. Radioactivity. Radioactivity uh, happens because of the weak force. And the weak force is controlled by two particles called W and Z bosons. All of these things are things we've measured. We know everything up on this board exists right now. We have seen every single one of these things. And then there's one more force left. And you all know this force. What's this force? What's the force that's missing? Gravity. And gravity, we think, has a particle and we call that particle a graviton. And I'm going to put this in quotation marks with a question mark. Because the graviton we've never seen. We haven't found it. And we think there's maybe a reason for that. So the, the way I wrote those forces, those forces are in order of strength. The strongest force that exists out there is what? Strong force. Yeah. That makes sense. The electromagnetic force is then a little bit weaker than the strong force, and then the weak force, and then gravity. So gravity is actually a weaker force than the weak force. Gravity is weaker than weak. And the reason we think that happens potentially is because gravitons are super, super tiny. They actually might be so tiny that they leak into other dimensions. This is a prediction of string theory. And how many dimensions did string theory say we have? 11. So maybe gravitons are leaking out into those other dimensions. How many dimensions are we used to? How many dimensions can I move in? I can move in three. And then there's one more dimension we can add on top of that. What do you add on top of three directions? Add four. Mm. What is the fourth dimension? Time. And then how many more dimensions to get up to 11? Seven more dimensions. Anybody picture what that looks like? Can we draw a picture of that? Good luck. Right. But we think that maybe gravity leaks into those other dimensions. OK. That is almost the standard model of physics. That is the physicist's periodic table. You can build anything from these things. There's one thing that's missing. Does anybody know what's missing? You might have heard about it at some point. It's popular like five years ago when they were looking for it. They found this thing. Second word is boson. First word is Higgs. The Higgs boson. And the Higgs boson is this energy field that surrounds everything and stuff interacts with it. It controls how things interact. If you're a nerd, the Higgs boson is kind of the force. It's just everywhere. The particles interact with it. And to find a person that can control the Higgs boson. 
Uh, this is particle physics. This is the standard model of physics. This is the last physics that you will learn in probably your lives until you go to PT school and they tar start teaching you the same physics that you've already learned. Just in relation to bones and moving. Any questions on particle physics? <laughs>